So Raider fans, you showed up last night. You showed out last night. But the team, especially in the first half, was not ready. On the other hand, I will say this. For those of us that are Charger haters or Raider fans, you had to love the perpetuation of the storyline last night. This thing went on all night. I mean, it's all anybody talked about was how there's so many more Raider fans, how the Chargers haven't really been accepted in L.A., how L.A. is still Raider country. I mean, this went on throughout the entire game last night and to the point where after the game, the Charger players doing social media on the field, these guys were like, yo, we just got that dub, and they said we didn't have any fans. Well, the, the few of you that were here, we heard you. We, I mean, it, it was crazy how <laughs> everybody was talking about the fans and how there were so many more Raiders than Charger fans. So while you may not have been happy with the result, like I was hoping that the Chargers would lose, uh, while I wasn't happy with the result of the game, the perpetuation of the story was fascinating to me. And I'll tell you one last thing before Alex and Grande jump in. This morning, 7 a.m., <laughs> 7 a.m. this morning, I turn on Stephen A. Smith and, uh, and, and his morning show, uh, First Take on ESPN. And Stephen A. Smith is, I'm going to say, bragging to everybody. Hey, I was at the game last night. SoFi Stadium's unbelievable. The owner's suite out of this world. Thank you to Dean Spanos for all of the hospitality wow. last night. Can you imagine the Chargers, who were the worst team in the world when it comes to dealing with media while they were in San Diego. This is the same organization that would call me threatening to take my credential, telling me I was hurting their business by being critical of them on the radio in San Diego. This is an organization that from a media standpoint has gone out and recruited a guy like Colin Cowherd. They've let him into the war room on draft day so that Colin Cowherd would become a supporter and would go on national radio and national TV and hype the Chargers. The fact that they had Stephen A. Smith in the owner's suite last night and they're feeding him drinks and feeding him food and kissing his ass and telling him how great he is. Also, that Stephen A. Smith can go on the air the next day, win, lose, or draw and hype the Chargers. Look, I don't want to say it's completely unethical on Stephen A.'s part to, to be wined and dined by an owner because Stephen A. is not a journalist anymore. He's a personality and a $12 million a year personality. So, you know, he is wined and dined as if he's a movie star, not as if he's covering the team from a journalistic perspective. But man, oh man, whoever inside the Chargers is coming up with this newfound media strategy, find the biggest stars in media, kiss their ass, welcome them, show them a great time and hope that they're going to go on TV the next day and tell everybody how great you are. It is working perfectly. It worked with Colin Coward. It worked last night with Stephen A. Smith. I applaud the chargers. It's the smart thing to do. While at the same time, I say to these guys, you guys are total sellouts. Okay. It's okay. By the way, I mean, I would sell out too. If I were in Stephen A. Smith's shoes and the owner invited me to the game, wind me and dine me. And then I went on the air and told everybody how great it was. I'd do the exact same thing. So I'm not I'm not saying that you're a sellout and and I'm gonna hip I'm gonna be a hypocrite. No, no, I would sell out too. I would sell out just like you did, Stephen A. I'd sell out just like you did, Colin Coward. And if the Rams invite me to their suite, the next day I'm going on the air and I'm telling everybody how great the Rams suite is and how great Stan Kroenke is, even if they get blasted by Arizona. So look, um, last night, there's so much to talk about with last night's game. Alex, what's your top storyline? Out of last night's game. It's not my top, but I will start it off with the fact that there was somehow a weather delay, even though they were an indoor stadium, because there's like the open ended end zone part was hilarious. And that gave us 30, 40 extra minutes of the pregame show talking about how many Raider fans there were there. Like that was a nice little bonus for us Charger haters because they, they intro the Raiders twice. And Susie Colbert goes, they're booing the home team. Fantastic. 90, uh, Steve Young, who was the MVP for me last night, goes, there's 90% Raider fans here. It's not even close. And I feel like I feel like they told Booger McFarland, like, hey, can you please um, be a little positive about the Charger fans? And he's like, you know what? A couple more, a couple more seasons of wins, and and, and they're gonna pack this place with powder blue. Like, so there was a try, there was an effort of balance there, but it was really difficult to do anything positive for the Charger to pregame show. And what I mean, if you miss it, I, 
I don't watch pregame shows. I tuned in five minutes before kickoff, and I still got to catch this little gem by Steve Young. Just put yourself in his shoes, okay, real quick. Steve Young, he's in L.A. He's in the Chargers stadium. He's not in a studio. He's not anywhere. He's in Los Angeles. And he still calls them San Diego. 34-33, San Diego. Wow, this is going to be a bar. San Diego? San Diego. Oh, <laughs> San Diego. Uh, well, well, hey, I'm yeah. telling you what, give me five. <laughs> hey, you heard the coach talking about how gangster is. That means you got an old gunslinger. Let me go with the L.A. Chargers. I mean, dude, come on. All right, so Steve Young calls five him San later. Diego. He has to do push-ups. But didn't he do it a second time or maybe even a third time? He did it a second time as well. Justin Herbert is a guy that I think the same year Chargers go, holy crap, we just drafted on a generational balance. All right. Well, that one, the audio wasn't as good, but what he said is, you know, Justin Herbert, holy crap, we've just we've just drafted a generational talent, the San Diego Chargers. So Steve Young, right, he's in Los Angeles. He flew into L.A. He stayed in an L.A. hotel. He drove to Englewood, and he's standing there inside the Rams stadium, and he still calls the Chargers the San Diego Chargers. So yeah. I, I liked it also. I, listen, I was so confused. I got it. It is not a dome per se, you know? It is a it is a roofed, roofed, roofed. It is a stadium with a roof over it. So when you go to SoFi, if you ever get there, um, the the stand there's actually wind that can blow through because it's not really enclosed. It's, it's covered. Yeah, it's covered. It's not enclosed. Do you understand the difference? Yeah, I mean, it's, I know you do. It's a uh, it's covered, but not enclosed. Yeah. So yeah, weather delay last night in this game. All right, Browner, uh, your boy Herbolt, he really showed up. And, and I'll tell you, man, the, the country is starting to really pay attention when you've got a win on the road against Patrick Mahomes and you've got a road win against the Raiders and Derek Carr, who is, you know, having this monster first three games, you know, listen, I can sit here and tell you, uh, and I can pick it at the charger organization, but I can't really say that much bad about the team itself. I mean, Herbolt is a great young quarterback. I love Austin Eckler and his story because remember, Melvin Gordon was a first round draft choice and he was expendable because an undrafted free agent became their lead running back in Austin Eckler. They did go out and get a ton of offensive linemen. They drafted wide receivers year after year when we thought that was a big mistake. And they've they've got a bunch of tight ends whose names I never don't really know. And then defensively, you know, you you got Joey Bosa, and there's a bunch of other guys who you're like, you know, I don't really know this team anymore. But, man, they're fast on defense. They're aggressive on defense. Um, so, look, you know, I, analytically speaking, I can tell you, Chargers look really good. And last week when the Rams beat the Buccaneers, everybody shot the Rams to the top of their power rankings. This week, the Chargers destroy the Raiders, and the Chargers will shoot to the top of everybody's power rankings, and everybody will go gaga over the Raiders, or excuse me, over the Chargers. But it's, that's what it is. That's what this league is. It's every week you find a new flavor that you love. So, Brown, what'd you think last night of your boys? L.A. Brown? The Chargers are the second best team in the AFC. And they are a hair behind mm -hmm. Kansas City. Because I, I, I believe in Patrick Holmes a little bit more because he's more proven than Justin Herbert. But I told y'all before that game started last night, it was a coming out party. And, and, and he partied. He came. Justin Herbert missed a couple of deep throws. But the way he throws the ball on the screen, legendary. Legendary. Second best quarterback in the league, if not the best quarterback in the league. I love Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes throws, they come from different angles, but they look like what you saw last night. It, I, 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 that's greatness. That is greatness, uh, in period, point blank, end of story. The Chargers will be, much to the chagrin of a lot of people who, when they left San Diego, I get it. I get the anger. I get the distaste still to this day, forever until they bury you, put it on your tombstone. That kid, is, that kid is great. And that team is going to be great. I don't care how many people show up cheering for the other team. Didn't hurt him. Didn't matter to him. I think it's making them better because yes, they know the this is all we got. This is all we got. The 53 in here. That's all we got. Don't worry about what's happening on that field. Stick with me. Come with me. Just zing, 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 game time. There was a lot of talk about the Raiders going into this game. A lot of talk about Derek Carr. A lot of talk about John Gruden. 
nobody was really talking about Justin Herbert. There were some people murmuring, but they weren't talking about him like they were talking about Derek Carr, and he just went to Kansas City and beat Patrick Mahomes. So, all right, here we go. Let's go. Here we go. Buckle up for the ride, baby, because here we go. He is the well, Tatis. He is the Tatis of football. Well, if that's the case, and if he's the Tatis, I would say to you that the Chargers are the Padres. Indeed. And and what happens ultimately is we get ourselves all hyped up and we get caught up, and then all of a sudden things come crashing down to earth. Listen, um, you know everybody knows my position here, okay? I'm rooting against them, and I'm rooting against their success. And when I say that, you know, I like Justin Herbert. And I like Austin Eckler. Right. And 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 I like a lot of the players that I see as someone who loves football, but as someone who can never get over what that franchise and what that ownership did to this community, I can't ever root for them. But analytically, I can look at them and go, wow, they're good. Now, historically, what happens with these guys, it doesn't matter who the coach is, doesn't matter who the quarterback is, it doesn't matter what stadium they play in, it doesn't matter how many fans they play in front of that are wearing blue historically, this team finds a way to screw things up. And you may say, well, this is a different generation. Well, I got news for you. When Phillip Rivers was in his second year, the things that people are saying about Justin Herbert are the same things people were saying about Phillip Rivers. Same stuff, same exact stuff. And by the way, the Rivers teams back then were real Super Bowl contenders, which this team through four weeks looks to be. But there's so many things that are going to happen between now and the end of the season. So me... I pumped the brakes on hype. No you know? brakes pumped. One of the no uh, brakes. one of the easiest things of all time as an NFL first year head coach is to do the opposite of what Anthony Lynn did, and that's exactly what Brandon Staley's doing. Like he probably just saw what Anthony Lynn did in most situations. It's like, what would he do? Okay, I'm doing the opposite. It's not that hard, you know. Like the best job in the NFL right now is to be his punter because he's just not going to use you. So it's it, it's an easy thing to do. Like. The thing about last year and the Chargers, what made it so fascinating and hilarious was that it's the same team. It's the same quarterback. It's the same receivers. It's the same Different Joey Bosa. Line, yeah. It's oh, the, That line's already hurt. They, the Brian Bulaga's already gone. So it's the same team. And, and it's just a coach that is actually competent. It's really not that hard. Stop overthinking it. You got a quarterback that can give you a yard almost every time. Most NFL teams do you know what i mean like nut up i was gonna say a bad word and just go do it well like it's not I mean, that hard what what he's already done last week uh going for it on fourth and four but then getting a penalty and still going for it on fourth and nine that was a gutsy move by brandon staley you know early in this game last night he tried to fake a punt now hunter renfro the receiver Great from the play. raiders who's one of my favorite players in the league um he comes up and makes a stick and the chargers don't pick up the first down but I love the idea of going for it on fourth down. I love the idea of faking a punt. I love the idea of doing things that conservative coaches don't do. You're yeah. a first-time head coach. You're a young guy. You got a contract. You're not going anywhere. The Chargers don't like to fire coaches because they don't like to pay contracts. You got, you, you've got the future. So you might as well just go for it in the early stages of your head coaching career and see what happens. And I, I think, think that's what he did last night. The message has been sent across the NFL. You need touchdowns. Field goals ain't going to get it done no more. You need sixes, not threes. And that's why I think once you cross that 50 between the 35 and the 40, if it's three or four yards, teams are going for it. They are going for it because we are now in a scores league. All the rules. Not all teams. Yeah. All Well, saw it last night. You yeah, know, I mean the, the Raiders, Raiders down the Raiders down seven and or ten. What was it? Fourteen? I don't. Remember. I think it was down fourteen, and they and tried they to kick a field goal, and you missed it. Yeah, and they I were and down you might seven. be right. I they think you're right. Seven. It was seven. So they were thinking, hey, you know what? Let's kick the field goal here, and let's let's try and get the ball back, and and let's you see know, if plenty we can. of time left in the game. Yeah. You know, they there there was a fifty two yard field goal, not the longest of field goals, not the shortest of field goals, but they were down by seven. There was ten and a half minutes left. So you're like the old school traditional coach is like John Gruden's like, let's kick this field goal. And if we score a touchdown, then we got the lead. Mm-mm. Bill yeah. Belichick did it the other day on Sunday yeah. night. Mm-hmm. He went for yeah. a field goal in well, the monsoon. And I'm I, talked like, about, I talked about like Sean Mc, I talked about Sean McVay the other day, down 27 13, trying a 46 yard field goal. If you make it, you're down by 11. What good is that? And as it turns out, they missed it. So I'm with you, Browner. Listen, I've got this philosophy that if you are inside of your opponent's 20-yard line and you're going in, 
on fourth and short, you should always be going for it, right. not kicking short field goals, especially, by the way, when you're a team on the road. I would have rather have seen Gruden go for it. Now, I will say one thing. This game could have been a little different late in the game when the Chargers were up by 14, I believe. Um, Derek Carr threw a bomb, and the receiver was wide open, man, yeah. and he overthrew yeah. him. And that Because the game, the momentum was changing. The Raiders had stolen momentum from the Chargers when they'd gotten it to 21-14. It they, felt like at a halftime the momentum. Raiders yeah. had momentum coming out of halftime. And yeah. That game, for whatever reason, it switched at halftime, and the Raiders came out blazing. You know who – Couldn't finish. You know who Derek Carr – he has an identical twin in the NFL. Kirk Cousins. <laughs> when all is going well, he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Any sign of adversity, any pressure in the in the uh, in the pocket, he's a terrible quarterback. You well, get him outside his comfort zone, he stinks. That's what Joey Bosa said mm-hmm. last night. In fact, oh, here yeah. play it play it for everybody. All the Joey uh, Bosa. Two two things Joey Bosa said after the game last night that made news. One, his criticism of Derek Carr, and two, his beatdown on the referees. Let's let's listen to the Carr one first. Uh, we knew once we hit him a few times, he really gets shook, and and you saw on on CC sack, he was pretty much curling into the ball before we even got back there. So um, great dude, great player. He's been having a great year, but we know once you get pressure on him, he kind of shuts down and he's not as effective with the, with the crowded pocket. So uh, that, was, that was the key to it. All right. Well, that was the first one that Joey yeah, Bosa wow. had talking about how Derek Carr, you know, crumbled under the pressure. But then Bosa, who had a late penalty in the game going after a referee, um, a 15-yard penalty that could have changed the game. Didn't, but could have. Um, here's what Bosa said about the refs. And by the way, be prepared, Joey. You're going to have a big fine coming your way from the NFL this week. And Listen you're not getting any calls the rest of the season. <laughs> I didn't even right, know they right. called the penalty on me because I was fuming. But, I mean, refs are blind. Simple. I'm sorry, but you're blind. Like, open your eyes and do your job. It's so bad. It's unbelievable. I mean, look at the play. Sack, game over, 15 yards. It's a big deal. Um, obviously, that's on me. I should never lose my control like that. But these guys have got to do a better job because it's been years of terrible, terrible missed calls left and right. It's uh, really pathetic, honestly. But pathetic on me, too, for, for doing what I did. Call or not, I have to take a step back and just go to the next play. But, man, they just seem to not be even have their eyes open half the time. Oh, dude, Joey Bosa is going to be getting a big-ass fine from the NFL, and your point is right on, Alex. They'll be calling penalties on everything he does Oh yeah, the whole year. 